Good night, brothers and sisters, all of you who will be joining me for tonight's study. I'm sorry that I did not get to announce uh, what would have been the study for this evening. Today was a very, very hectic and busy day for me, so I didn't get to do um, the various preliminaries as usual. But here I am, um, just doing some final, you know, last minute um, stuff with the kids here and the house and stuff. And to be able to come on um, right now to talk about the last days. And so I hope this didn't catch you off guard like it kind of took me off guard with respect to the time. If you notice, I switched to time because um, somebody was suggesting, specifically Joan. Nice to have you, sis. Uh, Sister Grace, Sister uh, DeAndre John Baptiste. Nice to have all of you. Um, <clears throat> I, I um, was told that it's better if I try to start a little earlier. So that's why I started actually um, this early. And I didn't get to make a post because, as I said, today was very hectic for me. With the kids, a lot of cleaning and washing and, you know, everything else. So, sorry for the unannounced pouncing upon you. But I'm sure it'll be worth the while anyhow. So, let me just um, give it a couple of more minutes for everybody else to get on. Those who um, will be able to make it. And then we'll get into it. Um... While a lot of folk may, may look at this time as, you know, very distraught that churches close, you know, we can't go to church. But the good thing about it, um, you know, the church, the body of believers is always alive and well. And God will always use circumstances to help us to be shrewd and wise and as to how we um, go about ministry. And so this is an aspect, you know, um, internet ministry that we can very much capitalize on to get the word out. You know, it's not that I'm just starting this. Uh, those of you who know me from way back then, I've always been doing the lives, but I didn't have internet for some time. So that's why I'm just getting back on to actually do them. So nice to see every one of you. Sister Lisa David, how are you doing there? Still praying your strength in the Lord. Sister uh, uh, Rev. Hilda Vaughn, so nice to have you, all of you who um, will be coming. Uh, Christopher E. Monique Johnson, I suppose that's an account, joint account with husband and wife. Uh, nice to have you and all of you other ones who will be coming on. Thank God for you, Sister um, Laurie W.B., Laurie Bardessa. Nice to see you all is on the battlefield for the Lord. Um, you know, staying... Um, keeping us up to date with what's happening and and all of that. So, yeah, thank God for you there. And everybody else, like I said, um, there are a lot of people who you may want to see these kinds of st studies and topics, but they are not friends of mine as yet. So feel free to share them on your, on your timeline so that they can be able to see them or watch as well. So, one second. Yes, Munchkin? All right, stay here, but... All right, put the chair right there and use it. I'll put on the earphone so it wouldn't disturb me. Get the other one, get the other one. Tell Kyle I'll give you the other charger and then you... um. Switch the charges, that's all. Just switch them. Yes, guys, you see my daily struggle, all of those daddy moments. I, I, I could do whatever, literally. They, they still happen. No matter how grave it is, I could tell them I'll drop dead if they come and disturb they especially Munchkin. She don't care. She's going to come and pop in and let me know what's going on and do what she must. Kyle, switch the charger with, with your sister. Laurie laughing at me, huh? Boy, it's really rough with all these daddy moments. And if I dare lock the door, it'll be actually worse. Because I will have... She's not going to stop knocking. She'll keep on knocking. And what I'll have to do is actually stop here and then go open the door. And then go referee or whatever and then get back. And you see, she ain't even closed the door. Kalia, 
Come close the door, please. Yeah, so y'all y'all really pray my strength in the Lord with these little munchkins, yeah? They they will end me before Kamar gets back. <laughs> Sam, nice to have you, sir. Nice to have you. Uh, all of you who are coming on, nice to have y'all. Thank God for you and your passion for the Lord and uh, the ministry and seeing others um, come to know God through your life and ministry as well and what you are doing to spread the gospel. All right, let me um, let me um get to it, Munchkin. Oh, you turn the fan on. So just sit right there, no noise, please, and just put on the earphones, okay? Because you don't want to disturb that. All right, sweetie. All right, thank you. All right, sweetie. So can everybody hear me well? Y'all hear me loud and clear, right? Yeah, Joan, she um she will. She's already is. I mean, sometimes, boy, based on what I'm seeing, she she's gonna be a wonderful uh young lady. I just gotta keep doing my best with them, you know. But boy. Up in here, I'm telling you, man. Alright, everyone, let's um let's get to it. And all of you who are coming on, thank God for you once again. It's very nice to have you. Um please share share the videos um so that your friends and everybody else you know can see them because they might not be friends of mine and will not be able to see it all right sister laurie god bless you too have a good one sister lisa please do please do please do i really need the strength you know <laughs> i really need it uh brother kevron sutton nice to have you bro nice to have you all right let's get to it because you know i do not like to um Keep you along with these studies. I know you got things to do. So this evening we are we are uh, going to look at the last days, and of course, um, last days comes from the Greek word eschaton, which means last times, last things, uh, depending on how it's used in the context. That's where we get the word eschatology from, which is um, eschatology looks at uh, events and situations and things of the last days. Thank you very much, um, Sister Amber Jane Johnson. I'm glad you can hear me uh, very well. So the last days is very important. It's a very aspect of theology, specifically, you know, Christian theology. Um, other things and other, other um, religious groups and belief systems have their eschatology as well. But the last days is very um, uh, unique. A lot of things are, of it, rather, is very unique to the Christian church and tradition. And, um, you know, you, you hear the term thrown around a lot, especially when uh, major events and situations like the coronavirus right now that's going on happen, you know. Can use this as a, as a fair mongering tool, you know, we're in the last days and, and God is about to come right now. So get your act together and that sort of stuff. And, and I don't mean that, you know, we should not get our acts together and we should not anticipate the coming of the Lord. But the way it comes off, you know, is more like a fanatical, alarmistic kind of thing. And um, when that high kind of wears off, then it, it, it tends to send people back where they used to be before, you know. So that is the rough, you know, tension that that creates. But the last days is a pretty much biblical and theological uh, teaching. We, 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 we come to this um, from the various... Uh, books of scripture such as Daniel, the apocalyptic book of Daniel, um, Revelation, and the rest of the New Testament epistles uh, speak a lot about the last days. Um, of course, you know, in, in any um, teaching or theology of the Christian church, people will have their different views and perspectives as to uh, what it is and what's going on and how they perceive it. So it's no strange it shouldn't be strange rather that um, some groups, you know, for some groups, the last days were, were brought about um, in 1798 with um, the papacy. For them, the Pope and the papacy are what brought in the last days after the papacy, uh, papacy reigning in their theolo theological system from um, 538 to 1798. So for them, uh, when the Pope was captured and taken to 
France where he died in exile, uh, then that brought in the last days for them. Then for others is the formation of the European Union, for others is the breaking up of the European Union, uh, for others is the year 2000 that actually brought in the last days. And so they understand the earth to have a 7,000 year uh, time span on which to, to operate and to be viable. Uh, 6,000 years, they say, have gone already. 2,000 years from Adam to Abraham, then 2,000 years from Abraham uh, to Jesus, then from Jesus to the year 2000 is the 6,000 years, and then the year 2000 brought in the last 1,000 years uh, of Earth's history. So they actually see it that way. Uh, you know, but again, people are free to hold what um, views they have on these different things. But I just want to bring a strictly biblical perspective on uh, Bible teaching on what is the last days and, and uh, events that will transpire in the last days and what should be our attitude and focus and, and um, um, focus, uh, lifestyle rather, with respect to the last days. Uh, so those of you who are joining me just now, thank God for you. I'm happy that you could um, make it. Uh, the New Testament, though, presents the last days not as a specific time after the first coming of Christ, like 1798 or, or um, the year 2000 or the formation of the European Union or any of that stuff. But it's more so the first coming of Christ that actually ushered in the, um, the eschaton, the last days. And so the last days, biblically speaking, is a time period that spans from the first coming of Jesus straight into his second coming. And so the last days is not a, is not a small block of time within that time that, that is ushered in by, by what the papacy did or caused or what, what certain events world powers did or caused or, or any of those kinds of stuff. But it's more so the Lord Jesus Christ himself actually is the one who brought in the eschaton. You have to understand uh, the significance of this. You see where, where, where scripture is concerned, where uh, Judaism and, and, and Jewish theology is concerned and how God revealed himself to the Jews and then to all the world is that the Jews were the center of everything essentially. And so all things relating to the law, to salvation, uh, to, to the knowledge of the one true God actually was brought about by them. And so they were the actual uh, focus of everything. And so Jesus, as Romans 9, 5 puts it, who would have come through that tradition, when he came, he actually brought in the eschaton, the, the last days. And so the New Testament consistently presents the last days as being the time period from the first coming of Jesus straight into the second coming of Jesus. And so uh, uh, in Malachi chapter 4 verse 5, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And so here is a prophecy about Christ, the Messiah, the great and awesome day of the Lord, which is actually, you could say, uh, judgment day, the final day. But God says before that come, he's actually going to send Elijah the prophet. Now, this great and dreadful day of the Lord will be brought about by Elijah the prophet. Now, when Jesus began his ministry in Matthew 11, in no ambiguous terms, he actually made it absolutely clear that John the Baptist was Elijah who was to come. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 13 and 14, it says, For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. So what Jesus is saying here is, all the law and the prophets is that the law is the first five books of Moses. The prophets are everything else. Sometimes the Psalms are called the law to sometimes they're called the prophets. There are various uh, nomenclatures for them. But all of that, the entire Old Testament was prophesying until John. This is what Jesus said. And he says, if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. So here Jesus actually recognizes and says that John the Baptist 
is that Elijah, who Malachi had spoken about, uh, who would come in to uh, usher in basically uh, the great and dreadful day, day of the Lord. So just before that day comes, he's going to send Elijah. And John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. This now brought in the very first coming of Jesus. And Jesus brought in the eschaton, the last days. The apostles and writers of the New Testament understood this eschatological perspective and they unanimously spoke of their day as the last days. In Acts chapter 2 verse 15, we see where Peter responded to what had happened on the day of Pentecost and the people thought they were drunk. Peter responded by saying, for these are not drunk as you are supposing, for it's just the third hour of the day, nine o'clock in the morning. People aren't drunk, you know, at that time they do so in the night as Romans uh, 13 chapter Roman chapter 13 rather would have said. And then he says, but this is what was spoken by Joel the prophet. It shall come to pass in the last days. Notice the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. They shall prophesy. I will give wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the coming of the great and magnificent day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So Peter here is actually quoting Joel chapter 2 verses 28 to 32 as fulfillment of what took place on the day of Pentecost. So Peter, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, recognized that what happened on the day of Pentecost and the coming of Jesus and his spirit are, are coming down on the disciples and the message is being preached to all the Jews and Gentiles alike to come to faith in Christ is actually a fulfillment of an eschatological prophecy, the last days. It brought in the last days. And so the day of Pentecost, Peter says, the, the events that transpired there uh, were about the last days. So Joel had spoken about it. And here now Peter is saying, these men are not drunk as you supposing, but this year is fulfilling the prophecy that God would have given to Joel. And notice how profound the, the, the prophecy is. God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. This is profound. Because before, if you recall under the Old Testament, our Old Covenant system, we have God's Spirit being poured out occasionally to certain individuals to actually uh, empower them for a certain work. And so when you look at uh, Samson, when you look at Gideon and all of the others, Elijah, you would see how the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. And after that, you know, there'll be talks of the Spirit of God going. Like they are no longer empowered to carry out that task anymore. But God says in the last days he'll work differently. He'll actually pour out his Spirit on all people. And the pouring out of God's Spirit would not be a trinkle or a momentary, uh, just a little taste, but it's going to be a permanent thing. If you also recall under the old sanctuary system, where the priests, they stood to speak for God and to speak to God for the people. Uh, 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 that ministry was confined to them. But in the last days, God is going to give everyone his spirit. Everyone who comes to him, sons and daughters, everybody is going to receive an unction of the spirit of God and they will be empowered for ministry. We also see where it talks about the various um, uh, cosmic signs and things that would be uh, happening signs in the sun, moon, the stars, and darkness, and all of these different things just before uh, that dreadful and magnificent day come. And here is the, the most significant thing about the last days. Uh, verse 21, Peter says, It shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, you would recall under the Old Covenant system, they had a lot of shadows and types and, and a lot of rituals whereby they had to come into Judaism, and that was considered to be salvation. They had to keep the law, circumcise first, 
uh, 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 then start to keep the law and go through all of that, that for them was salvation. But in the last days, when Jesus brings in the last days, God is going to operate differently. To the point now, it's whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so the last days not only will bring about a lot of cosmic and cataclysmic things, not only will it bring about a permanent uh, office of the Holy Spirit in the lives of all believers and not just a specific or group of people who God will choose and empower for particular work, but the last days will also bring about a time when salvation would be available to everybody and uh, people will not have to go through rituals and performing of rituals and a law-centric uh, mode of existence to actually be saved. All they need to do is to call on the name of the Lord and they'll be saved. Romans chapter 10 also talks about this. With the mouth confession is made, with the heart man believes unto salvation, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so without a shadow of doubt, brothers and sisters, we can see then that the, the eschaton, the last days, was brought about by, by our Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was a harbinger of it. He was a, a herald of uh, Jesus who would bring the last days. And just before that come, the Bible tells us in Malachi 4, John the Baptist would announce it. Then Jesus would come and he would usher it in. Peter, on the day of Pentecost, who was preaching to the crowds, recognized that Christ had brought in the last days that God had prophesied by Joel the prophet, and the last days were here because the Spirit came down. He took permanent residence on his people, and all who were hearing the word of God were being saved and come into faith in Jesus Christ. We also see in Romans chapter 13, verses uh, 11 and 12, where it talks about the last days, you know, and when you can study these passages for yourself, or those of you who came late, um, just, you know, watch the replay or whatever, ascertain what scripture teaches on this issue for yourself. The last days are not so much as, as um, things that would bring about uh, a fear mongering and fanaticism and, and you know, people just going rat back crazy, basically. But it's more of a time of salvation free for all. It's more of, 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 of a time when the new covenant is inaugurated and grace is being lavished to all. Yes, of course, there will be conflicts and moral degeneracy and degradation and all of these various things. Those will happen. But those aren't so much the, the supreme focus of the last days, but more so now we are in the dispensation where the Holy Spirit of God takes residence. He takes office with respect to the proclamation of the gospel, with respect to possessing and inhabiting uh, his people, the, the universal church, the body of Christ, uh, and we are being empowered now to take the gospel to the world and to transform the world, even as we anticipate the great and dreadful final day of Christ. That's essentially what the last days are about. Romans chapter 13 verses uh, 11 and 12 also says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So here Paul is speaking to his uh, Roman audience, mixed of Jews and uh, Gentiles, obviously. And he says, knowing the time, now is high time to awake out of sleep. Now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. And here, salvation he's talking about here is not coming to faith in Jesus because that happened when they believed, but more so salvation and deliverance from the world, from our sin and these negative experiences, which the second coming of Christ would bring about. So because Paul understood that Christ had ushered in the eschaton the last days, they anticipated that Christ could come at any time. And that is why as we read the New Testament, we see this focus and anticipation of Christ being able to come at any moment in their life, life, lifetime. Because for them, they clearly understood 
that Christ brought in the last days, the eschaton. Are you following me very clearly, brothers and sisters? If there's something that you don't understand, feel free to shoot a quick message and I probably can reiterate or repeat or seek to break it down a little more simpler for you if you're not comprehending what I'm saying so far. And so Paul is saying here that, you know, our salvation is mere. You know, it's not time to, to fall asleep as believers. The night is far spent. And the night here would have been referring to the previous eons, the previous times when Jesus wasn't, you know, here and he did not come in flesh. Then he says, the day is at hand. And the day here is a reference to Christ. Second coming is very near. And so he urged the church to cast off the works of darkness. That is the immoral things they were doing, uh, the dilly dallying and all that was ungodly and unchrist. Like he said, it's time to throw that aside and let us put on the armor of light. In other words, let us essentially focus on Christ and the, who is the light of the world and, and the gospel message we've been given and let us let it not only be proclaimed through our mouth but also through our lifestyles and and how we live because at any moment our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can come uh, sister Donna Collins you can get the rewind actually when I'm finished with the live and then it's gonna be available on my page and then you can watch it all over from the start so that's how you'll be able to see it all right the next text that I would like to go to is first Timothy uh, chapter 4 and it says now the Spirit speak expressly that in the latter times notice this is speaking about the la last days as well it's not all the time the authors will will specifically use last days but there are various ways uh, um, they, they they speak of the last days last times latter times last hour we're gonna see all of that uh, the Spirit says through the Apostle Paul in the latter times, which is the last days that was brought in by Jesus, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience set with a hot iron, forbidden to marry, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So here, Paul is actually reiterating the fact that the Spirit communicated to him in the last days, some will depart from the faith. And faith here is not used to refer to salvific faith, but more so the Christian teachings, theological faith, the body of Christian teachings. This is what I'm, he's referring to here. And then he talks about demonic activities there will be a lot of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons that people will actually be given heed to and then he itemized few of them they are going to forbid people to marry uh, well before we get to that they're gonna uh, be hypocritical liars uh, their conscience are gonna be as it were said with a hot iron it's hard to convict these people of the simplicity essentially of the gospel message and salvation they're going to forbid people to marry and command people to abstain from certain foods. And then he explains that, you know, you ought not to let anyone tell you what to eat and what you mustn't eat because every creature uh, is good, having been sanctified by God's word and prayer. So this here is telling us in the last days there will be an increase of uh, demonic activities, uh, demonic teachings. People are going to be hypocritical liars. They're going to be very, very, very hard to convince of biblical truth, abstaining from marriage, and they are going to make a big deal out of what people have on their plates. And so here Paul reiterates what the last days will be and look like. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, from verse 1 to about verse uh, 9, he repeats uh, something similar. It says, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come now i don't want you to think that before the first coming of christ there didn't exist any perilous times you know uh, sometimes there were earthquakes sometimes there were famines sometimes there were wars and all of these things existed with ancient cultures and civilizations we see that but the last days as brought in by christ what would be different about it with respect to these things is that it's going to actually cause a frequency of a lot of these things as well as an intensity. 
And so, yes, wars and famines and uh, uh, unfavorable circumstances existed. Those things did. But the last days, as, as, as Jesus brought in, and of course the demons know that they have a short time and and so they're going to try to deceive a lot of people and destroy a lot of people with, um, by means of wars and diseases and pestilence and all of that. There's going to be an increase in these things. So there's going to be a frequency as well as intensity with which a lot of these things will happen. And so here Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Know this, speaking to the young pastor Timothy, that in the last days, perilous, and perilous here means difficult, hard, uh, times are going to come, and here's what it's going to look like. Guys, please be careful, okay? And here's what it's going to look like. Uh, men will be lovers of their own selves, narcissistic, uh, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And of course, I can't do a proper breakdown of all this, but just to give you a general overview as to uh, uh, what the last days from the first coming of Christ straight into the second coming would actually uh, look like. Uh, Paul gives a description of how people are going to be the minds and characters and attitudes of people. Uh, he says they're going to be unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of those that are good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. So even the church in the last days, you know, church people, those who make profession to religion are going to, you know, be a certain way. They're going to have a form of godliness, uh, but there's no sanctifying salvific power, essentially. No power to control themselves, no power to, to exude a, a, a sanctifying influence, basically. And then he says, from such turn away. Then he talks about uh, of this sort of those people are uh, those who creep into houses, uh, lead away uh, gullible women laden with sins and various lusts, and they are always learning and never able to come to knowledge of the truth. So here, Paul is actually describing the intensity with which people are going to be in their moral degeneracy. As he describes the last days, perilous times will come. Hard, difficult, crazy times are going uh, to come. Uh, Kevron is asking a question. As they say, eating pork put you in hell. Why do they ignore Paul, what Paul says about eating meat? Uh, those are very good questions, uh, Brother Kevron. And of course, you know, they have the, the way they, um, they articulate and, and view these things. Um, of course, I, I've did um, an entire, you know, series on, on to eat or not to eat. You can check that out on YouTube um, where those questions are actually answered as well. But if it is that perhaps you want to specifically look at that differently, then some other time we can do that. And that's something for, for them to consider, um, I suppose, as well. And so the last days we'll see an increase in, in a lot of moral degeneracy. People are going to just be... Be crazy and brazen with the immorality. People are going to be narcissistic. It's going to be all about money. People are going to be boastful, uh, uh, proud and blaspheming God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving. I mean, all sorts of crazy activities will be going on where the last days is concerned. Again, does this mean that these things weren't happening before? Absolutely. You had some of that. But with respect to the frequency and intensity, the last days will be unmatched. You know, when you go back into ancient cultures and civilizations, there are various uh, codes of honor and ethics and respect for parents and, and loving thy neighbor and all of that. It was superb. But as Christ came and brought in salvation in the last days, you know, from, from the first century straight to now, you can see an increase in, in, in um, a, a frittering of, of these various uh, codes of ethics and moral values that, that we hold that actually helps us to have decent and meaningful um, civilizations. And so 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 9, you know, highlights some of the things of um, the last days. The next passage we look at is Hebrews chapter uh, 12, Hebrews rather, chapter 1, sorry. Verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And here's what it says. 
God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days. So here it is again. So the author is contrasting the previous times, you know, time past, and how God spoke. He says, in former times, in various ways and methods, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. And then he says, but in these last days now, he speaks to us to, through his son, Jesus Christ, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom he made the world. So here, Hebrews chapter 1 is very clear with respect to what the last days is and how God operates uh, in, in um, the last days and when the last days came. So in time past, in various methods and ways, God spoke to the forefathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he speaks finally, completely, authoritatively through his son, Jesus Christ. Essentially, beloved friends, you don't, you don't need me for God to talk to you. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm about to drop some bombs right now. You don't need me for God to talk to you. You don't need a pastor. You don't need a priest. You don't need a prophet. Are you listening to me? You don't need a prophetess. Uh, you don't need the Ten Commandments to talk to you. You don't need the Ark of the Covenant, the Urim and the Thummim, or visions, visions and dreams, or any of those things. God speaks absolutely, finally, and definitively through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is God's final and absolute prophetic voice to the world. Did you hear what I just said? Jesus is God's absolute, complete, and final prophetic voice to the world. And so, God's ability to talk to you, to reach you, to save you, to, to instruct you, is not resident in me, Elsa Jr. Thunder Lauriston, nor anyone else out there. That is absolute and final and complete and crystallized and succinct in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So when people are coming to you about this and that person is God's prophet and God's absolute voice, you need to listen to them. And this and that person has some absolute revelation and vision from God that you need to somehow uh, 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 place your, yourself under their, their subjection and authority and, and they are the dictators and controllers of your lives and, and your salvation is hanging in their hands. That is absolute rubbish. You don't need that. God speaks definitively, absolutely, finally, and completely through our Lord Jesus Christ. And he does so in two ways. How many ways did I say? In two ways. He does so through the avenue of the Holy Spirit. And he does so through his complete, final, and absolute authoritative word, the Bible. Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? And so don't let anybody come and after Christ and the closing of the canon of scripture, come and seek to tell you that they are some authoritative prophet and voice that, that um, you need to listen to, uh, you need in your life. All you need for life and godliness and salvation, God absolutely has communicated and demonstrated and spoken and, and preached through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I can't stress this enough. Uh, the author of Hebrews here says, in the past, God spoke by the fathers through the prophets and various means. But in these last days, ushered in by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he speaks absolutely through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the person of Jesus, his word, uh, uh, the ways we ought to live, the things we ought to believe, can be found authoritatively in the word of God, scripture alone. And that's all you need, beloved. If you don't get anything else, if you don't get anything else from this presentation tonight, I hope you go away with that assurance. And so the author says, God speaks to us in these last days through his son, Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26, we also see Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26, where the author, as he was describing the, the Greatness of Christ's sacrifice, 
and how it differs from the Old Testament types and shadows, he says in verse 20, 26, he then would have had to suffer uh, often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, the last days, ushered in by our Lord Jesus Christ, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And then he talks about how um, it is appointed uh, unto men once to die and after death is judgment. So the author spoke about the various sacrifices the Jews had to offer every day and every year for their sins, which couldn't take the sins away, but they were just copies and types and shadows. And then he says, now, Jesus in these last days, he has made one full-time, complete, final sacrifice in these last days for all of God's people. And so the author of Hebrews twice in this book recognizes that the last days uh, were brought about by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when, when God is no longer speaking in, in, in uh, uh, nebulous ways and in types and shadows, but he speaks profoundly, authoritatively, and finally in Jesus Christ. In James chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, we also see uh, something else about the last days. James chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, where the author says, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasures in the last days and then he goes on to talk about how they are robbing the poor and holding back their wages and the poor are crying out to God and God is going to um, avenge them so here the author talks about the sort of greed that was existing in his time the first century and he I am sorry it keep pausing because I am um, getting a call uh, but I have to reject it because I'm on the live so hopefully um, uh, it's not messing up the thing too much and um, I can, uh, when I finish this, I'll get back to it. Uh, so here, essentially, James is saying how the rich, they are consumed with their wealth and treasures uh, in these last days, but they're going to be corrupted and corroded, moth-eaten, and all sorts of things are going to happen to them. And when the Lord comes in verse 7, he talks about how uh, God is going to actually uh, avenge uh, his people for the abuses that they are enjoy, uh, enduring rather from um, these individuals. We also see in 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 18 to 20 where Peter says, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your futile way of life handed down from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb, blameless and spotless, Having been foreknown indeed before the foundation of the world, he has made manifest in these last days or last times for you. And so Peter recognized that the sacrifice that Christ made and the fact that he was a lamb blameless and spotless and the perfect sacrifice he made and his manifestation to the world happened in these last days for us, his people. And so the last days, as I said, Jesus brought it in. He brought in the, the free, unavailable salvation for all. He brought in the ear of the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit come and he sits down on, on um, believers. He inhabits uh, believers. He takes charge of our lives uh, and he draws us to God's word to understand it and to live God's word uh, as we preach the gospel. And then in chapter 4, verse 7, Peter says, Now the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be of a sound mind and self-controlled in your prayers. And again, Peter recognized and understood that, that Christ brought in the last days. And that at any moment, he can actually come and rescue his people. We see in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 4, where he says, This already, beloved, is the second letter I write to you, and both of which I stir up your pure mind by a reminder. To remember the words having been previously spoken by the holy prophets, 
and the commandment of your apostles and the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that mockers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue just as it was from the beginning of creation. So Peter here is actually saying that as he writes the second letter to his, his uh, audience, he's trying to stir up their pure mind and to remind them what the prophets and apostles and the commandment uh, they, that Christ himself had delivered to them. And then he says, know and understand properly that, that mockers will come again when? In the last days. He's talking about his time. Walking according to their own lust and they are mocking and jeering. How come Jesus hasn't come yet? And so the last days will see an increase of mockery and, and jeering and, and mocking here uh, can actually be understood to be agnosticism and atheism and, and jeering essentially uh, Christians and the Christian me message. And so Jesus says from long time he's coming, look how long it's been and, and, and he hasn't come yet. Peter says there will be an increase of this uh, in the last days. And again, when you actually look at the past 2,000 years and the increase of these various uh, isms and, and these various schools of thoughts and philosophies uh, that have been challenging and mocking specifically uh, Jesus and the Christian faith and, and the message. And so the last days, as Peter saw it, would actually bring in an increase of people mocking and, and losing faith in, in, in Christ and the second coming. And then, of course, when you read the rest of the passage, Peter says, you know, uh, uh, God is um, patient. He's not willing that any should perish. One day with the Lord, it, the Lord is as a thousand years, etc. And we ought to be patient because like a thief in the night, when the time has come, he's coming. And so don't lose hope. Don't lose heart. He is actually coming. Now, I saw a uh, draw to a close. I have about three more texts to give you. And then we will bring this, this uh, study to a close. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. And John says, little children, it is the last hour. The last hour is another uh, phraseology or term for the last days, the last time, because where they are concerned, Jesus brought in the last days and he has gone back to heaven, heaven any moment he can return. So, so the New Testament authors and apostles recognized that they were actually living in the eschaton, the last days, and Jesus can come at any moment. And so he says, little children, it's the last hour. And just as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. And so John says, the last days will see an increase in a lot of Antichrist. A specific Antichrist is going to come. A lot of them came already. But he says... A specific one is going to come again I'm not one who's going to you know uh, 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 gesticulate as to who this specific Antichrist is even though I can give you some some you know potential uh, individuals and the criteria that John gives but the last days for John he understood was in his time where many Antichrists came and there's a specific one that was actually going to come and then we see in Jude uh, 17 and 18 where he says, But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that in the last times, the last days in which he was living, there will be mockers. He seems to be referring to Peter here, walking according to their own ungodly lust. So the last days would see mockers and people jeering and scorning the very thought that Jesus will actually come again and they'll be walking according to their own ungodly lust and unconverted, unregenerate natures. So again, when you look at since the coming of Jesus Christ, how these uh, situations, these sinful behaviors and issues have been on a serious increase. And lastly, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, where the prophecy of uh, the book was given, 
there was a sense of urgency because, again, John knew that his audience was living in the eschaton, the last days. He says, blessed is the one who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and who keep the things having been written in it, for the time is near. And so, beloved, as I, as I, as I um, draw this uh, study to a close, we can see very clearly that Jesus Christ brought in the last days. And essentially, the last days since Jesus brought it in would be an increase in intensity of moral laxity and wicked stuff. Uh, there will be a, a, a basically push against the, the preaching of the gospel. People's heart will be uh, hardened towards the gospel of, of Christ. The last days will, will bring about a time of great um, perils and trials and tribulations and uh, uh, catastrophes all over the world. All of these are, are signs of the last days. There will be anti-Christian uh, spirits going around. All sorts of activities will be going on. That is the, the negatives that will be happening with respect to the last days. But the positives now are this, as we saw. The last days brought in the era of Jesus Christ, the Messiah we've long anticipated, and the preaching of the gospel. The last days brought in the era of the Holy Spirit, where unlike the Old Testament, he momentarily comes on an individual uh, for a specific work, and then he goes thereafter, you know, after they're empowered, then he's gone. The last days would bring the reign of the Holy Spirit, where he resides in the heart of believers. The last days will bring about the preaching of the gospel freely, everywhere, ubiquitously, and there will be an easy response to the gospel as well as to salvation. And so as Joel chapter 2 has said, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whereas before where Judaism was concerned, your salvation had to be uh, eventuated through the law, through circumcision and, 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 and all of that stuff. That's the system that they were given. It was couched in, in, in types and shadows and, and various forms. But the last days, all we have to do is just call on the name of the Lord and we are saved. As we hear the preaching of the gospel and, and respond, we are saved. The last days will bring about a time when when, when God's work, God's uh, 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 empowerment, uh, the preaching of the gospel is not confined to the priests and Levites as it was in the Old Testament system. But now God works with the universal priesthood and body of all believers. Just as 1 Peter chapter 2 puts it, you, all of God's children, are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar pre people having been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light to shine in the world for him. And so the last days brought in direct access to God, direct empowerment by God upon all who believe in our Lord Jesus Christ to be used to display his goodness in our lives. And so, as I said earlier, was it 1798 that brought in the last days? Absolutely not. Was it 1844 that brought in the last days? Absolutely not. Uh, was it, was it uh, the year 2000 that brought in the last days? Absolutely not. Is it this present coronavirus that brought in the last days? Absolutely not. Where scripture is concerned, it's the Lord Jesus Christ at his first coming who brought in the eschaton, the last days, where... Uh, he brings salvation free for all. He brings the Holy Spirit. He sends him to, to be the leader and the guide of all of God's people. And he speaks authoritatively, absolutely, prophetically to all of his people. Whereby we don't need to be dependent on, on things and people and institutions and individual denominations to to connect with god to to hear god's voice to know god's will we come directly to jesus 
we are giving his Holy Spirit, that, beloved friends, is what we see that Scripture teaches about the last days. So as I close, what are the, the, the practical uh, applications to, to our lives with respect to the last days? Well, of course, now that Jesus has come, he has brought salvation to us all, that ought to determine how, how we live our lives. Uh, the last days is not a time of fanaticism. As Jesus said, you know, occupy till I come. The last days doesn't mean we must turn headless chickens and, and run into the hills and the mountains and the sky is falling and all of that. The last days is a, a stability of, of, of life, of, of purpose in Jesus Christ. To know that it's not a specific time or event that we are looking forward to to happen to get ready for his coming but we are actually living in the time of the last days from the very first century when when he was born and now all of the directions of our lives are to be lived in according to this reality and so how should we live we should live with the full assurance of salvation uh, we should live with uh, the consciousness that that we are God's temple and he has filled us with the Holy Spirit and, and the, the obligation is upon us as citizens of the kingdom to preach the gospel in, in our talk, to preach the gospel how we live, to, to preach the gospel on, on, on Facebook or, or however, uh, uh, that our lives ought to not be consumed in, in me, myself and I and my career and just trying to get wealthy. Are you following me, beloved? This is the... The, the, the practical applications I'm giving you now. Our lives ought to be lived with the consciousness that, that Christ can come any day. And he has saved me. So now the responsibility has devolved upon me to actually live in such a way and care for unbelievers in such a way that I purposefully seek their salvation. This is what the last days means for believers. And with respect to the fanaticism that you are so um, uh, aware of, where people are anticipating the mark of the beast, you know, whatever the interpretations of that is, and, um, you know, uh, the doom and gloom, believers don't, don't have to be, be interrupted with this sort of fear-mongering. We have full assurance of salvation in Jesus. Uh, his atonement, full, final, and complete on the cross, has paid all that was needed for our salvation. And so for us, as we see things are happening around us, it's not for us to go crazy, basically, and to start lose our minds, but it's actually for us to be conscious of the fact that, yes, we're in the last days. Uh, these things are expected to happen, but as an agent of Christ and the Holy Spirit, let me practically do things to alleviate the pains, the stresses, the heartaches, and the burdens of humanity. This is what it means for us, brothers and sisters. And so even as we, as we grappled with this difficult issue where so many people go bananas, I mean people literally go nuts with respect to the last days, believers who have a good grip on this, this, this uh, teaching from Scripture... We don't have to lose our cool as we think, see things are happening around us. We should confidently in Christ and the Holy Spirit and standing firm on God's word, continue with our lives like business as usual. And what do I mean by that? I mean the same way you have been living for God, the same way you have been doing all you can to, to take care of yourselves and your family and to to preach and teach the gospel, to live it, you go on with business as usual. You know, depending on the emergencies that arise, you may move with more, more urgency and swiftness and, and helping people and, and, and divesting certain things to, you know, to help people to alleviate uh, their struggles and, and to, to, to be a light to them. But it doesn't mean that you are going to go bananas because, you know, the last days is here. The last days has been here for 2,000 years now. And, and, and while there will be an increase in, in, in catastrophes, uh, cosmic issues, 
There's also the positive side. There is the ubiquity of the preaching of the gospel. Uh, 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 the, the easiness uh, and access of salvation. And the empowerment received by the Holy Spirit for us to act and to work for God. And so as I, as I sign off this evening, brothers and sisters, I thank you for having uh, spent the time to join me. Sorry for the, the slight interruptions every now and again with the call. Um, usually I put it on airplane, mo airplane mode that I don't receive um, calls, but I, I had forgotten to do so before I came on, so that's why that happened. But, but I, I'm glad that you endure uh, me through these uh, foibles and situations, and I'm glad that you're enjoying the teachings and studies nonetheless. So, so thank you very much for um, the time having spent here. Uh, all of you who came on, God bless y'all. Uh, the various ministers from the various uh, contexts and, and churches, uh, be encouraged in these times, you know, do what you can to, to minister to your people, uh, to preach the gospel to them, to, to be there for them, to provide pastoral care and counseling. Uh, uh, the lady, do all you can. You know, you don't have to do much. It doesn't have to be... Donating five million dollars and all of that. No, the, the, the simple things, you know. Uh, check up on your on, on your loved ones, someone you haven't spoken to in a while, your neighbor, you know. This time calls for, you know, uh, proactivity on our part in doing all we can to help people and to shine God's love. And and as I said, the last days is not a is not a is not a bad thing. It's a good thing, it's the ear of the Holy Spirit. And an easy salvation for all. It's the era uh, where God is in charge, where God is saving his people, where God is empowering his church, and he's using everybody who comes to him by faith to actually get the word out. So so thank you very much for joining me. And of course, you know, keep a brother in prayer. Um, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the struggles are here, they are real. The attacks of the enemy are here, they are real. Uh, you know, family issues are here, they are real. So please keep a brother in prayer. Uh, wifey is still in Canada, and I just heard that they're about to shut down the country. Uh, I don't know if it's today or tomorrow, but she's supposed to uh, be coming in Sunday. So I hope that that um she could get to make it through before it shut down. If not, then she'll have to be there much longer. So I'll keep her in prayer, you know, as I keep your families and your situations and context in prayer. Uh, but again, you know, we're hopeful to God. We have We have strong assurance in him. Uh, we know he's leading and he's guiding us. Uh, he has us in his hands. Whatever happens for death or life, Jesus is ours and we are his. We don't need nothing else. So thank you very much, brothers and sisters. I, I thank God for you for sacrificing the time to join me. And I do hope that you enjoy these studies. Please share them, share the word, pass it along. Uh, that just as how you have been blessed and you have learned something, that those who aren't friends of mine can actually learn by it being on your page, all right? Uh, so until next time, hopefully tomorrow evening, I hope to tackle another topic. But as I said, if you have any suggestions or things you would want me to, um, to um, tackle or do some teachings or share some thoughts on, uh, let me know. And I'll see how quickly I can get to work on them. So love you all. Thank you very much, Joan. You know I love you to the morning back. Uh, thank you for all your prayers and your support and for your encouragement. Uh, take good care. Uh, all the precautions again you need with respect to this issue. Wash the hand them good and proper. Yes, make sure uh, the hygiene is turned up uh, in this time. Take all the precautions that you need to. Look out for your brother and your sister beside you, in front of you, behind you, everywhere. And um, keep sweet in our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and be, be, be reassured, be affirmed in your salvation. Whether you live or you die, whatever the circumstance, you belong to Jesus. He has you covered. God bless you. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to see you all next time. Love you all.